We'll come uh, to the second uh, KCS talk this semester. Uh, is my voice loud enough? Yes. Of course. Thank you. Uh, our speaker today is Dr. Sin uh, Liang, our junior member. Uh, the title of his talk is uh, yeah, Keeping Up with the Scientific Data for the Trust Driven Error Control Logic Compression. The purpose the why effective scientific data management solutions to, uh, to reduce time to insight on the final stage systems for omission uh, critical application. So we will call Dr. Leon on this talk. Next generation fusion reactor 
and we also have the cosmology so we are going to study the dark universe in the in the space. So again, because there are many many stars or many many materials in the space, it will take a lot of computation. Uh, uh, an emerging need or an emerging use case uh, for the computer system is the uh, 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 artificial intelligence. So this is uh, related to the large model, with the recent advancement in the large model. This model will require lots of computation. It will also consume a lot of memory because you need to store all of the parameters. You need to perform all the computation. So that will take a lot of time. So here again are some very quick introduction on some paper we have. There are multiple. So I will quickly I will skip this one because it is just to produce several computer systems. Now more information about the computing capability. So every year there are two top five hundred in computation in two conferences, the International Supercomputer Team Conference and the Supercomputing Conference. So basically this will this will find the fastest computer in the world. And uh, here is the very short list regarding the 10 fastest supercomputers. Super Basically, all of this, so from this table, we can see a very typical trend. First of all, as we said, most of the computer system, system in this list will have a heterogeneous architecture. This will involve multiple computing units, such as CPU and GPU. Basically, you need to be able to perform the heterogeneous computing to achieve high performance. On the other hand, there, are, there is a heterogeneity in the memory and the storage hierarchy. So originally, if, if multiple computing systems, we only have a very typical hierarchy. For, for example, we have the memory system, we have the storage system, and uh, that's all. And in the existing computing or current computing system, we want to reduce the gap of air performance. In order to do that, we add multiple layers in the storage system. We will have some local storage, or we will have some non metal memory. We will have some parallel system. So by adding the storage layers, we are able to transfer the data fast if we do some refresh page operations or cache operations. So this is a, this, this such characters will be will be important to fully taking advantage of the computing powers in this system. So then what will what is the current standard or what will be the challenges regarding this powerful computing system? So let's look at some number from the recent update in OL sales, which is the operate using computing facility. That this has it, that, that this that this institution just delivered the multiple computer um, XSL system. So as we can see here is the update from the Titan Titan to Sunday. Titan is a supercomputer that came back in 2014. And uh, Summit is the not latest one, it's the second latest one in OLCF, which is released in 2018. If we compare the, the number to each, we can say from Titan to Summit, there is the IO performance remains almost the same, and uh, their storage capacity is there is a four times increase. However, there is a six times increase in the computing capability. That is to say, the, the increase in the computing power is faster than that of I.O. and storage. So this will lead to high computing to I.O. ratio in the system. So if you want to fully unleash the power of these computers, you need to perform 150 Peter perform Peter blocks uh, operation and uh, Using the one terabyte IO speed, this, this, that is to say, you need to perform one million blocks per double precision data point. So, this is a lot. So, usually we, we will not perform so many operations for one data. So, this will lead to the IO gap in the system. So, after understanding the challenge and uh, the property of the existing system, and we will say some. Data challenge brought by the system. So after using the supercomputer to simulate the physical simulations, so for this for this one is cosmological simulation, we will produce a lot of data. So from if we want to simulate one trillion particles in the space or in the universe, it will produce 20 petabyte of data. 
And uh, the I.O. at that time is very slow. I think let's say the computer, the neural computer at that level, which is, which is that to 2010. In that case, you, it will take over 24 hours to download the data away. That is to say, you need to compute, you need first to perform the simulation, and you need to download the data. Excluding the simulation time, the downloading time will take 24 hours. That's not acceptable. Another typical example is from the planning simulation. This is a very important for our daily life. Basically, this, the scientists will carry out simulations to investigate the climate change. They will find some, the, the, the one to find some materials to, to mitigate the, the impact of the weather. The operation is going to the hurricane. If you can predict how the hurricane goes, you will, we will save a lot of life and uh, properties. So in these simulations, again, they will acquire, acquire thousands of uh, high resolution spectra every day, and uh, this can quickly run out of the data, data capacity for the observation data. Basically, they have some sensors to collect the data, but the, 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 their devices may not have the enough storage to hold all of the data. As such, there is a need to transfer the data as quick as possible so that the storage will not be over, overwhelmed. When so this is the climate simulation. And another example is the fusion simulation, as sometimes mentioned before. The, the scientists of one will carry out the simulation to investigate how to effectively build the next generation fusion reactor. Basically, again, they will simulate how the particles are going inside the device and figure out the, the materials to build the, the fusion reactor. Again, this is very important to building the machine and to maintain its, uh, to, to keep it in good status. And if you do not do it well, you may have some raw material for the, in the building process, which will help lead to huge nest in the replacement procedure. So this is for the fusion simulation. And again, it will produce, it is expected to produce exabyte data per day. That's a lot. Generally, it's very hard to store all of the data in the storage system. In addition to simulation, another scientific application we have is the scientific instruments. Basically, there are some devices that collect the data from some experiments. So for there are, here are some very widely used, um, used devices in, in, the, in the US. So basically, there are five. Basically, a lot of scientists are using this device to carry out the, the experiments. And uh, per our observation, so there is a, a queue to access these resources because they are very valuable. So in, for this, for all of these devices, they will produce uh, the data at a very fast rate because it leverages some specific device to generate the data. For example, you have some electron to hit on some material, and then you just get their start pattern, something like that. So these devices will generate the data at a very huge speed. So in addition to produce a large amount of data, which approaches which approach one exabyte, so the, the generation speed of the data is one terabyte per second. And because of the value of this device, you need to store this data as quick as possible. So you need to have a storage performance that is close to one terabyte per second. So this is another instrument. Basically, again, it will produce a lot of data. This reaches 4,800 4, gigabit per second. And uh, the, there is also some time-consuming tasks of this data, which may require a lot of computation. So as a summary, we quickly get overview what ch the challenges we have for the scientific application using the cutting edge computing system. So we will summarize it as five ways. The value, velocity, variety, variety, and uh, uh, the volume. So basically for the value, it means that our scientific data are usually too large to store and it will take too long to transmit. And uh, also, the, the data are generated in a very fast fashion, so basically we, we have very limited time to process the data. Uh, and uh, there, is a, there are variety, basically you can have, cannot have a general solution to deal with all of the data, because they have different properties, they have different 
scale, and then I even have different format. And uh, there is a veracity issue as well. Basically, you need to track track uh, how the data how this data generated to 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 know whether your analysis is correct or not. Basically, for this one, you need to understand the, the generation process of the data, and we want to reproduce the data if possible. For the value, most of the data are very valuable, and it's very costly to generate. You will need either to optimize the entire computing system to perform the simulation, or you will need to wait a long time to get the possession for scientific instruments. So generally, we want to. This is these are the challenges for the scientific application. So one direct way to resolve these challenges is, is to compress the data. So that is uh, widely used in a lot of areas, such as the image compression community. So basically, if you use lossless compression to compress the data, that, that's a way to preserve all of the data. Uh, but unfortunately, lossless loss uh, loss compression cannot resolve all of the issue because it has limited compression ratio. We will see it in the next slides. But if we look at how compression can resolve the challenges, I think we can deal it with the value issue and the velocity issue. After you compress the data, it will reduce the size. So you may have you, you may have used the same capacity to store more data. And similarly, you may have the same bandwidth to transfer more data. That's uh, one of the typical use of the lossless compression. But however, because scientific data are usually in floating point of format, so for this format, it has a month size. So for the IEEE 754 floating point of format, you have one bit for time, you have eight bit for floating point, and you have 23 bit for month size. So if we look at the visualization of this 32 bit in uh, scientific data, you can see that most of the data have the same size, that's good. That will make it easy for compression, and most of them have, will have similar exponents. That's also easy for compression. However, if you look at the money size, which is this part, they just look like a random noise. There is almost no part inside the data that's greater the challenge for the compression. As a result, if we use lossless approaches to deal with the scientific data, to compress scientific data, we achieve very limited compression ratio. So the general compression ratio for lossless intelligence is less than two in most cases. So alternatively, we will look at lossy compression to deal with the same issue. So basically, the main problem of lossy compression is that they achieve very small compression ratios. So lossy compression is another way of compression which deal, which trade off the accuracy of the data quality for higher compression ratio. So here are some the most advantage of the lossy compression is the tunable ratio. So basically, you can achieve any ratio you want to catch up with the I/O bandwidth requirement or storage requirement, and also you can have multi-scale representation, which can make your analysis faster. So here is the example of the JPEG compression. Basically, if you look at this figure, you can say that if you have a higher and higher compression ratio, you may lose more and more quality. So. If we apply lossy compression into the scientific application, then, then we can better resolve the challenges in value and velocity. We will have even smaller requirements on the data storage and the IO bandwidth. We will also we will also deal with the, some of the cases when the scale are too difficult to adapt. Because if you use some compressible representation, you can't just analyze different scale. However, if you lose, use the lossy compression, this will raise a very severe question. So can we trust the decomposed data? This is because lossy compression just alters some of the information in the data, which will lead to unknown errors in the scientific analysis. So our goal is just to provide effective or comprehensive compression approaches that can address this challenge. Basically, we want to significantly reduce the size of the data to keep up with the IO bandwidth requirement and the data storage requirement. Uh, so, the, there are three widely used scientific com compressors in the community. Basically, they achieve deep, they, they have different compression to perform the compression, but the 
common things that have is that the level of error control in the, in the compression approach. Basically, they, they will restrict the, the compression mechanism such that the, way the compressed data must follow some error control mechanism. And, uh, but even if we have this error control property here, but uh, here is another question. What will the metric for the to, to enable trust enable trustable data? That is to say, even if you have some error control, but it may not be the actual requirement of I want for my analysis. Then how could I deal with this case? So I will first quickly reduce the our Whoever's framework, which is called SA, this is a general error bound noisy compression framework. This one will not deal with the specific requirements from application, but it just provide a very general foundation for developing scientific data compressors. Basically, for SA, they have a mechanism as a state illustrated here. It has a four steps. So after getting an input, it will have a Prediction stage to decorrelate the data. It will also have a. It will also have a population stage to introduce error, but to reduce the entropy of the data. At last, it will have, have a encoding stage stage to effectively compress the data. So, SA is a general compression framework, and it has a lot of variation. Basically, based on SA, we can develop a lot of. Uh, uh, the domain specific compressors and uh, other specialized compressors. Uh, typical, uh, a typical example of the domain specific one is the cash rate, as we will say later. Basically, it just uh, addresses a very specific question while uh, effectively give compression. And uh, in order to make SA modular, we have designed a framework for the SA, for, for the SA compressor. Based on this framework, the user can Decide their requirements and based on that to develop their own compressors. That will make it easy to use for the scientists. So, due to the, the contribution in the community, SA received the 2021 RD 100 award. So, this is a very, this is a, a it, it is not the highest, but a very high award for the software in the community. So this is a general introduction, and uh, I will just use an example to illustrate the, the mechanism, not mechanism, but the usage of SA. So basically, for in one of our application, which is a content registry, so the scientist uh, will produce a lot of data in, as an intermediate result. So this, this data needs to be used in every iteration of their simulation, but they are too hard to store in the system. So as a result, this data will be either dumped to external storage, which costs a lot of I.O. issue, or store or recomputed at each iteration, each iteration to get the value. So in this case, it will also introduce a lot of computational overhead. So in our application, so basically using our software, we will instead of store the data into the external storage, if we have a large enough compression ratio, we can always start store the data into the memory. And then in the next iteration, we will extract the data in the memory and then decompose it for future use. So this just eliminates the cost of either I.O. or recomputation, which will which greatly um, improve the end to end performance of the simulation. So for this one, we understand that the scientist require an absolute error of the scientific end. And we design our quest, our compressor based on this requirement and uh, the character of the data. Uh, uh, in this example, this data has some very obvious or very similar patterns, and we different patterns to design our compressor, which satisfies the requirement while achieving high, high compression ratio. As a result, it significantly improves the performance of the application. Uh, unfortunately, the general requirement of error control, such as the absolute one, we say in the previous application, may not be generalized to all of the applications. So one of the issues we say is for critical point of preservation. So critical point is a very important analysis in scientific visualization. Basically, this extracts some of the centers in the vector field. 
So consider you have a hurricane, and uh, there are wind speed. This is a big field because for each point in this data, it has a multiple direction. So this constitutes a big field. And the critical work point will be the vantage point of this velocity. That is to say, for our velocity equal to zero, we call it, we call it a critical point. If you say in national phenomena, the center of the hurricane will be a critical point. And uh, in the ocean, the vortex or the eddies will also be critical point. Extracting the critical point will be important to analyze the underlying topological analysis. And it will help us understand a lot of the natural phenomena. However, the critical point interaction, while, the, while it's important, it's, it will not preserve the, during the lossy compression process. Because the, even if there is a very small perturbation in the data, it may affect the underlying critical point tracking process. A very typical example is the force case here. We have force positive, force negative, and force state type. For force positive, it means that in a specific scale, so in some, in some region, in some region in the entire space. Original, in the original data, there is no critical point. But however, due to the perturbation of the data during the loss compression, we find the additional critical point in the discovered data. That's just a result in the discrepancy between the original analysis and the, the analysis of the discovered data, which will produce falsified scientific discovery. So this is something we will not want to say. And uh, this is an example on using domestic dosage compressor, DSP, to uh, FT level to compress the data. And we can say in the original data, we have no critical point. However, in the decompressed data, after FT level, there is some critical point. And uh, as a consequence, it just distorts the underlying streamline around this region, which will give us quantified scientific behavior. So, this is uh, something we want to avoid in the scientific, in developing the dosage compression. Uh, in order to deal with such issue, we design a very effective compressor to preserve critical point during the loss compression. Basically, our idea is to map the requirement of the critical point of preservation to error bound. This relies on the extraction mechanism of the critical point. Basically, it is needed to solve a linear system. And uh, the we, we understand the extraction process, and uh, we know what the perturbation will be allowed to help the system produce the same result. In this case, we can derive the specific point for each point, the specific error bound for each point. So this is significantly different uh, from the original approach, which assumes the same global error bound on all of the data points. So instead, in our approach, we derive the point of the error bound for each data point which will give us strict preservation of the critical points. So this is the derivation process. I will skip them because all of them are mathematics. Basically, we just reduce the requirement of critical point to the error bound to each data point. And uh, in the previous slide, it just, it, it just shows an offline approach to derive the error bound and compass data, which also suffered from some drawbacks. One of the typical issues is that it will have a very low compression ratio because the over-preservation of the data. So in order to improve that, we just propose a coupled pipeline which derives the error bound and compressed data on the fly. So originally, we derived the data error bound offline. After that, we, derived, we just compress data based on the derived error bound. Instead, in the coupled scheme, what we do is to deal with the data in a point by point fashion, for each data point, we first derive the data, the, the error bound, and the compress data. In this way, it just relaxes the underlying requirement on each data point, which gives us higher compression ratio in return. So, as we can say, there is a ratio, there is the, the corresponding improvement on the 2D data. We can say a lot of improvement on the compression ratio. And in this mechanism, we are able to produce the error bound critical point of preserving the compression framework and it will give us some, some results that is that preserve that that achieve the, the purpose. So here just we just showed this is our example right in the previous slide. 
We can say that using our current compression skin, we basically preserve the project point. There is no additional project point in the, in, in the data. And uh, as a result, our, our compression data has the same behavior as the original data. So we wait to form the streamlined tracing. And uh, similarly, for this one, the existing compressors will exhibit the false negatives. So again, it will fix some scientific behaviors in the data, but our but, but our compression mechanism are able to do that in a perfect way. And this will also lead to future research on something like the the synthesis. Basically, the synthesis is the defines the topological structure. So if we are able to preserve the break point, we just uh, start the first step to preserve the separate set. Uh, even the members skin addressed the underlying critical point of preservation issue, but it also has some limitations. So first of all, the, the, this approach has very limited robustness because the numerical method. As we mentioned, so we have a, we need to stop a linear system to know the result of the critical point extraction, and it will subject to robust in 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 robust robust result because there is a lot of errors in floating point as I said it. If you switch the order of any two points, you may have a different result. And uh, also, it will have a limited compression ratio because the error number is sufficient in most cases. At last, there is no parallelization for the original mechanism. So if we have a very large amount of data, we will put distribute it across a distributed system. There is no mechanism to achieve the critical point of preservation. So in order to address this issue, we further revise our mechanism to develop a more powerful scheme. That's what we do is that we reduce the critical point extraction probably not this is not done by us, so this is not done by existing research. Basically, they can reduce this problem to a style of determinant preservation. So they use they just uh, do they, they found that if we can preserve the sign of the underlying linear system, not a linear not a linear system, actually it's an orientation. So if we can preserve the sign of the determinant for the orientation, we will get the correct result. So in order so this will not lead to robust issues because all of the computations are performed in a fixed point fashion. In this case, it will not have any wrong of error and it will produce a consistent result. And based on this mechanism, we just derive a new theory to get the error bound for this for this style, style of determinant preservation. Basically, we derive what the error can be tolerated if we perturb one data in the one, 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 one data point in, the, in, in this orientation. So the, and then this error bound will be used to compress the data, which will give us robust result. And then the second optimization we do is the so-called so speculative compression. So this is our trial and error process to figure out a proper error bound. So this will just help alleviate the sufficient error bound issue. We may, we may be allowed to use a large, larger error bound to compress the data but keep the same result. At last, uh, we just uh, investigate the e effective parallelization of the compression strategy. So the important issue is that we need to deal with the border sales, which will not receive any protection in the process. Uh, instead, uh, we modify the compression algorithm by integrating the parallel strategy. We introduce uh, a little bit of communication during the process to deal with that issue. So this will give us effective parallelization of the algorithm. So again, based on this mechanism, we received, we, we achieved some better performance than the existing approach. So at the almost the same quality, our our solution will deliver much higher compression ratio on the, compared to the existing one. This gives us better opportunities to address the I/O and the storage capacity issue. And then this will lead to higher performance when we execute the algorithm on a parallel system. Basically, we 
despite the, the introduced compression and decompression time, it will still deliver better entire I.O. performance and uh, it, it at least a greater performance in this, according to this figure. So uh, another study we have do for the pressure project, phase compression, is focused uh, on the calculatory. This is another important topology descriptor in the statistical visualization. Basically, compared to the previous one, which is the uh, point, that is a local feature. Basically, it is extracted only using adjusted points. That's why we call it local. However, for the contour trait, it is a global feature because it, the, the computation of the contour trait is to involve all of the data in the domain. That's, that is to say, it will, it, it, it will have both strength in developing the compression mechanism. So in order to deal with this issue, we apply a mechanism that is very similar to the previous one. Basically, we rely on the local constraints to, to preserve the property. But instead of using the previous derived error bound, we derive an upper bound and a lower bound to constrain the data. And there is a refinement operation because there might be false positive and false negatives after some iterations of that algorithm. So basically, we have a compression mechanism to deal with the entire domain. And this will create edge issue in some of the small region. And then we will refine the compression on those small regions to eliminate this case. This is how we preserve the control track using the feature preserving of the compression framework. So this is some results we have. Basically, if we can, this, this shows some iteration in our study. So in the initialization procedure, this is the first compression. We can say that the domain, domain produce some wrong results after the compression. And after that, we just uh, perform some refinement in the, in the iteration one. And after the refinement, we can say we eliminate the false case in this part. But we introduce some false case here. And in the iteration two, we will eliminate some, we, we have eliminated the false case here and here. But we produce some false case here. And uh, in iteration three, we just eliminate all of the case. And we get a correct preservation of the underlying two control traits. So that's how the algorithm works. So compared to the existing method, we can say that we, 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 we can achieve we, we can achieve the computer tree to the reservation. So in this case, we just show the, the number of the we, we, we just we just show the number of the first cases of our our of our, our method compared with the other. As we can say, only our method produces no first case for the preservation. Uh, in addition to that, another way, uh, another work we do to enable feature preservation in those compression is to develop a wonderful framework for QI preservation. QI is the short for the point of interest. Which is uh, which include a lot of properties such as the uh, point that we mentioned before. So for this one, which is our main contribution is to develop a decoupled compression scheme, which decoupled the compression stage with the feature preservation stage. Stage basically, we have designed a mechanism to derive the error bound for each feature and uh, apply uh, and pre to preserve the underlying feature. And also, we will apply an existing compression pipeline to achieve the actual compression. We decouple these two stages, and the, the, the benefit is that if there is a new advancement in the compressor, we can adapt it very easily. Also, if we have a new feature that needs a preservation, we only need to change the safety preservation or the QI preservation module. That is also easy to realize. So this just is to the development of feature preserving noise compressor for multiple QI or quantity of interest. And here is the result for preserving the corresponding feature, which is this is the visualization for the isotherics, which is widely used in a lot of simulation. Basically, for this one, we can say so this is the isosurface for the original data, and our method just produced almost the same isotherics compared to this one. However, if you look at the existing compressor with the same compression ratio, they will generate some irregular results due to the equilibrium of this feature. So 
Presently, the conference data according to our global error bound that will not satisfy, satisfy the requirement of the specific condition. And uh, let's lead to one scientific discovery here, definitely, you can say the discrepancy in the realization. So, in the paper one, we talked about one of our focused uh, research area that is to enable feature preservation or enable trust in you for Northern Convention, such that scientific, that scientists can use it in a face body or can believe with the result of the conference data. So in addition to that, we also generally, we also provide another way of reduce the data. This is, uh, we just rely on the multi-level data reduction and the progressive data decomposition. So for this one, in addition to produce a single error bound or a single snapshot of the data and the previous methods, this provide a sequence of the precision for the respective data. And uh, in order to in, in order to have better performance and efficiency, the for the progressive data format, we will have the incremental in incremental precision for each data snapshot, and there will be no repeated information for each data piece. So basically, we achieve that using the M card, which is a multi level data reduction framework. We just revise it until we combine it with the bit plan, the bit plan data encoding method to achieve the underlying progress evidence. So we can say a quick of how we do progressive is in our using this mechanism. So if you have already your data, we will use the existing composition method to decompose it into multiple levels, and uh, we will just compose it to different precision fragments using the bit plan encoding, and this will be stored to the parallel system. And we will select and pick some mostly used data in the, in the parallel file system, but move some of the extra data to the table. So as we may know, the tape will be will have larger capacity than part of the system, but it usually suffers from low I/O performance. So after the decomposition, if we come we want to retrieve the data, we will do it in this fashion. Originally, we have some data in the part of the system, and we will use it to recompose a low resolution representation. So this will give us a rough understanding of the data, and then. Based on our requirement, we may need to retrieve more data from the system to generate more accurate representation. So as a result, we will, re we will request the underlying data from the test and uh, recompose the additional difference of the data. And uh, after that, we will add this difference to the original data to generate the high resolution data. So this gives you higher accuracy of the original data, which will be which will be useful for your future analysis that require of high precision. So this is super useful when you have multiple analysis tasks. For example, if you want to perform a scientific visualization in the beginning, and you will prefer, you, you will need to perform the critical point the instruction after that, then you can use a uh, low precision data to achieve reasonable scientific visualization results. However, you may need multiple or additional data to achieve good results for the underlying analysis or critical point the instruction. So for this one, let's just separate the two analytics and you can overlap the data transmission time with the data recomposition time and the data analysis time. So that will again save a lot of time for the entire process. So here are more information regarding this approach, basically you can just uh, deliver better, better performance if you want to retrieve data in an incremental fashion. The key idea again of this one is just uh, to enable the progress evidence in the data representation such that you can have incremental, you, 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 can, you, you, you can have incremental update of the data with limited storage So, uh, using compression itself will may not alleviate the error. Uh, using compression itself will benefit for the storage issue. So, if you have uh, some challenges for the storage, you may choose compression to solve. And the compression will directly solve this problem. However, if you focus on the IO performance, the compression ratio may the compression may not have some benefit. So, the 
let me do that for the original data. We only need to write into to the system. Let's, let's only evaluate writing or reading that. However, after you use compression, you will introduce extra compression or decompression time. Or more specifically, while writing the data to the system, you need the first compressed data and write it to the system. This will introduce extra compression time. So if your compression time is super large or your compression performance is super slow, this will lead to even disadvantage. So in order to deal with this issue, we further extend out the framework to support multiple hardware for faster compression and decompression. So this is the example for QSA where we rely on GPU to, uh, to um, improve the performance of the CPU compression framework. So however, because of the distinct character of GPU, we have required the parallel processing with the limited dependency. We revise our underlying compression algorithm a bit to eliminate such dependency. Uh, in this way, we just achieve very high parallelism that leads to higher performance. So let's show the performance improvement from CPU to GPU. We can say there is a huge improvement. We have also applied the same mechanism to the MGAR compression framework, which is the multi-level one. For that one, we just need to the because the compression mechanism is a little bit. We also the way we optimize the algorithm is a little bit different as well. So an important uh, in optimization we do is just to have a have, have a an optimized computational kernel to perform the to to perform the analysis. Not analysis, the compression process. So basically, we have a linear processing kernel which accelerates the data decomposition. We also optimize the, the memory preference to, to achieve high performance in the entire process. So again, this will deliver higher performance compared to the CPU version, and it is expected to accelerate the I/O based on its high performance for compression. The reason is that if we have very high compression performance, our compression time will be low. And compared to the I.O. without compression, we have faster data writing time. This will give us better I.O. performance. We have also integrated our compression framework to the state of art data management system. So this is used in a lot of scientific applications to, to transfer data. So a typical use case is that is the in-situ data analysis. So assume you have a computer system, and the part of the processor you have in the system is performing the numerical simulation, and you have another part of the system perform the underlying analysis. So you need a data management software to exchange the data in between, and the ADIOS is one of the top op options to choose in that scenario. We have integrated our compression solutions into this data management software. And our next goal is just to enable faster data processing or data exchange for this for the different application. And at last, here is a quick summary regarding our research. Uh, our research focused on the interplay between the application, the computer system, and the storage system. Basically, our alternate our alternate goal is to reduce the time to insight for multiple scientific applications. And in order to do that, we need to understand the, the interaction between the three aspects of the application, storage system, and the computing system. We will leverage the power of the computing system. We will consider the overhead of the storage system. And we will also need to understand the, the character of the application to deliver the best performance we have. We have. So that is the goal of our research. So I think that's, uh, that's just concluding my presentation here. If you have any feel free to let me know. And I'm always interested in recruiting students for performing the research, uh, either paid or unpaid, or either during the semester or during the summer. So if you are interested in our research, feel free to let me know. And now I'm very happy to take any questions. All right, we have about 10 minutes for, uh, for Q&A uh, session. So if you have questions, let me uh, talk to them now. I understood some of your abbreviations, but not all. FP is false positive. FN is false negative. Tell us, what is FT? OK. 
pointed it out. I omitted this detail because it's uh, a little bit related to the techniques. So Ft is the first type. So consider all the types of all Ab. You have the the well, the order of the vertex. So you may get the vertex in this way, or you may just the other way around. You may attract in the water, or you may just expand in the water. So if you first you are attracted in the original data, you find an Ab that expels the water. So and the, but in the previous data, it just attracts the water. That just gives you a first type. This also is the wrong behavior of the data. Questions? I, I have a question. Yeah. I don't really understand that the mathematical work here. But uh, does your uh, compression technique you know, work on both uh, structured data set and unstructured, or even sublingual structured data? That, that's a very interesting question. So basically, uh, uh, Dr. Chen asked whether this mechanism works for different data formats. Currently, all of the mechanism I introduced is focused on the structured data or data on a structured grid, which is a Cartesian grid. So all of the data is a tensor and say it in that way. However, most of the algorithm can be generalized to the unstructured grid. Actually, this is one of our ongoing research. So we want to port the same algorithm to apply to different data types. Uh, the mm -hmm. unstructured data, basically you have a triangular mesh or something. This is not the way. So first, you have, if you say, yeah. we have decoupled the derivation and the, the, the derivation for our features and the compression framework. So even if you have the unstructured data, if we have, we can derive the corresponding restriction using the same formula. Or the same mechanism. The only difference is that we will develop a new compression framework to deal with this data. So basically, for those one, we need to consider the collection of the meshes, uh, how the data points are connected to each other to fully take advantage of their correlation. So in that way, actually, we will only change the prediction method here. This will even not affect the population stage or loss this stage. So in order to deal with the unstructured data, we just need to adjust our prediction algorithm to make it work for the unstructured grid. So that's acceptable, and actually, this is our ongoing research. So you think it, it would work? Or yeah. Would it? Yeah, we, we have some initial results. It does work for unstructured grid. However, for semi unstructured data, this is something I have, have not explored before. You can also ask questions during the pizza, pizza time. All right, then we thank uh, Dr. Leon very much for your interesting talk. Thank you. Very soft talk. Thank you. Thank you.